Shalom, Ya Sharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Akim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwaf listening today. Right? And, um, I'm back at you with another lesson entitled Salvation is Reserved for the Nation of Israel. Alright? When Yahweh sends his son Yahweh Shai back, he's only coming back for the nation of Israel. He's coming back, first and foremost, for the elect of the nation of Israel, right? Which consists of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. 12,000 from the, uh, the 12 tribes, right? Followed by the, the, the great multitude scattered across the four corners of the earth, right? That is who Yahweh Shai is coming back to redeem, okay? You know, because you, you've got you've got bogus doctrine out there talking about how salvation is for all, right? But that that's that's not scriptural, man. You know? But I, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna you know, I'm not gonna speak too much. I'm gonna let the scriptures do the talking, man. And so lucky if I come across a bit tired today, you know. I had a, a, a long day on the plantation field, you know, as I'm sure <clears throat> Uh, those of you listening, you you know you you're probably going through uh, similar situations, man. But yeah, man, today was very, very much especially draining, man. So so lucky, but you know through the spirit, I'm still gonna bring it up. Let me just <gasps> so lucky. Let me just get this AC on. Excuse me. Damn. Right. So this is the book of Matthew, chapter uh, ten, and verse five. We'll start verse 5. It reads, These twelve Yahweh Shai sent forth. And these twelve is talking about um, the twelve disciples, right? Which, you know, we're continuing in the stead of the twelve disciples, you know? We might even be amongst the twelve disciples. Because, you know, all the prophets of old are, are, are here today, man. And if they're not here today right now, then they've, uh, you know, more than likely, most recently, gone into the spirit world, you know? Elder Abba Bivens would be a, um, a perfect example of that because he is actually Elijah in the reincarnation and he's also John the Baptist, you see, but he's not with us here right now, right? But for the most part, uh, you know, for the most part, all the prophets of, of old are here today doing the exact same thing, back in their lot, prophesying about the downfall of this wicked kingdom, man, and this kingdom really has to go. But anyways... Let the scripture let me let the scriptures do the talking. <coughs> Matthew ten and five. These twelve Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To the house of China, to the house of Israel. To the house of Ukraine, to the house of Israel, to the house of Russia, to the house of Israel, right? Salvation is only for the Israelites. What does it say in the following verse? Verse 7 reads, And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're preaching, right? To the lost sheep of the nation of Israel Saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand Whether they will hear or forbear That's down to them man That's down to whether the heavenly father wants them That particular individual To wake up to this truth right But we still are doing this work Whether they hear or forbear Because that's what we was instructed to do right <clears throat> Let's go to The book of Baruch Chapter 2 We'll start at verse 30 It reads For I knew That they would not hear me Because it is a stiff necked people And we we are You know our people Jake We're stiff necked people man They are no telling us shit You know We we are uh, We're pretty much hard headed We're stuck in our ways And 
You know, we, we think we got it all it, we think that we got it all figured out, right? But you see, two thirds of our people are gonna realize they ain't had it figured out all along, right? Because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Who's gonna remember themselves? The hopeful elect, those that the heavenly Father uh, uh, um, wakes up, right? Verse thirty-one. And shall know that I am the Lord their power. For I give them an heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And that's what we do, man. We praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in the lands of our captivity. Right? And um what's the word, sorry. And we think upon his name, man. You know? That you know, if you're if you're serious about this thing, your your center thought is always going to be around Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You know, the, the, you know everything that you do, every action you take. You know, the center thought is always going to be Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? And that's how we're meant to be, especially in these final days, man. In these final days, our center focus needs to be on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We need to. Starve our distractions and feed our focus, man, so that we can receive that salvation, right? Because we don't want to die to death of the wicked, trust me. Verse 33 And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And we're the only ones that's returning from our stiff neck. We, we you know, realize that, oh, okay, this is the truth. We made changes in our life, in our lives, and we continue to make more changes in our lives. You know, we're, we're constantly self-examining, you see. Verse 34, and I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them they shall not be diminished right so you see the heavenly father he's getting ready to 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 gather his elect man and to bring forth that that um great and strange salvation you see and it says that i will increase them so you know the scripture says to be fruitful and multiply and uh you know uh a little one among of among us will become uh, a thousand, right? Roughly paraphrasing. I can't think of the scripture right now, but you know, the scripture goes something like that. And they shall not be diminished, man. So look, man, in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a lot of sex, man. You know, the Israelite man is going to be, uh, you know, is going to have more than one woman. He's going to have as many women as, as, as he wishes. You see? And there's nothing unlawful about that. You know? M many of our forefathers have multiple wives. And that was not unlawful. Right? So the women are going to be in their order, man. But also, you know, having more than one woman allows you to, 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 to really nation build. You know? Because you can bring back uh, the nation of Israel a lot faster if you're able to impregnate more than one woman at the same time. So you see, there's, you know, there's a reason behind Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's decisions, right? You see, and, and, and that's just something that, that you modern day women are just going to have to accept, right? Because th those are the times we're coming into, man. It says in Isaiah 4 and 1 that seven women shall take hold of one man. Because that's how bad uh, uh, the tribulation is going to be, man. Leading up to our salvation, right? From there, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 2. And we'll start at verse 8. And it reads, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see, and this is speaking to the Israelites, because you, you need to remember that the Bible is a book written by the Israelites for the Israelites, right? 
This book isn't written for you other nations, man. You see? It says, ask of me and I will give thee the heathen. So who's a heathen? Right? Anyone outside of the nation of Israel. That's a heathen. Right? For thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth of, for thy possession. So we're going to inherit the, 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 the kingdom of, of heaven, man. You know, that's going to be down here on earth under Yahweh Shai. Right? Verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You know, so we're getting ready to, to, to put hell on you other nations, man. Especially Esau, Edom, you know. You, you, you guys, you Edomites really believe that you've gotten away with all your iniquity, man. You really think you ain't going to pay for it, right? Well, you're, you're sorely mistaken, man. You're going to pay for it in the kingdom for a long drawn out a thousand years, right? Verse 10, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. This is speaking of the hopeful elect, those that um, follow this word in truth and sincerity, those that wholeheartedly believe in this word, man. Right? Verse 11, it reads, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Right? Because we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, man. We don't need to worry about the next brother or the next brother. We need to worry about ourselves. Are we doing enough to be saved? You know, we need to be constantly self examining ourselves, right? Verse 12, kiss the son lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. And that's what we're doing, man. We're putting our trust in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You know? Because <coughs> there ain't no place for us back in the world. If we, if we fall out of this truth, where are we going to go, man? You know, there's nowhere else to go. And to be honest, we're too far in. We're too far in right now to just um oh, this guy best not come here with his dog, man. We're too far in to just sort of just call it a day and to, you know, just turn back. Right? We've put in all this effort already, you know, so why the hell would we just want to turn back? Man, this is, I think this guy's gonna come bother me, man. Hopefully not. You know? We put in way too much effort, man. We sacrifice way too much to just call it a day and to just give it up and to just, you know, um, just, just, just go back into the world, man. You know, that's the last thing we want to do because look, a lot of death, destruction, calamity, and tribulation is coming to this world, man. So the last thing we want to do is be a part of that, right? These nosy ass Edomites, man. You always want to know what the hell's going on, man. Always want to know what the hell's going on, man. Want to do peeping tom all the time, man. <laughs> they don't know that their time is done, right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40, <clears throat> verse 17. It reads All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So Heavenly Father, you don't care about your other nations, man. You're, you're, you're just servants and handmaids. Especially Esau Edom, man. Who right now, Esau Edom, he thinks he's top dog right now when he's the basest of men. Right? I, I definitely forgot to find that scripture. Lord willing. Let me get that real quick. Yeah, man. And you know, this scripture right here, it really proves that the Heavenly Father, uh, 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 you know, is the true power of heaven and earth. Because, here, you know, here we are. We got the basest of men ruling over us, man. You got the basest of men ruling over the sons of the living power, man. Why is that? Because the Heavenly Father sanctioned it. Why? Because we wouldn't hearken unto him, man. We kept going off, right? So, so this is the punishment. What was it? Daniel 7. Damn, I lost it already. 
Where the hell was it? Salaki. Daniel chapter 4. And. <clears throat> Salaki. Daniel 4 and 17 reads This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Right? So proving that the Heavenly Father, he, he put you in your position, Esau. You didn't just one day wake up and decide you was going to overthrow the Israelites. The Heavenly Father, he sanctioned it. Right? And setteth up over it the basest of men and that's exactly what you edomites are you edomites are, are are the lowest of the low right you are you are um that bottom tier man in comparison to these other heathen nations man the edomites are bottom tier right they're the lowest of the low yet they're ruling over us so that proves that there's a power in, uh, uh, up in the heavens man there's a true power yahweh bashim yahweh shai Right? Because he set it up that way because we went off. Right? And he's about to flip these curses, man. These curses are about to land onto you, Esau. You best believe that. Right? You ain't going scot free. You ain't going unpunished. You see? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 45 and 17. It reads But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. You see? So the next world to come is for the nation of Israel to rule perpetually, forever, right? Forever and ever, right? Salvation isn't for all nations, man, because if it was for all nations, then who, who, who do we get as slaves? Who, who, who's going to build up our kingdom if salvation is for all nations on earth, Right? The Heavenly Father, he don't care about you other nations, man. We just read Isaiah 40 and 17. Let's get that again, right? All nations before him are as nothing. If you ain't an Israelite, the Heavenly Father, he don't care about you, man. And we've got this Edomite coming back again with his dog, right? And they accounted to him less than nothing and vanity, right? So you guys thinking that you're the shit, that's all vain, man. That's all vain glory and the heavenly father he's about to um he's about to cast away that vain glory that you other nations have man you know you get you other nations have had the 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 sons of the living power in derision for far too long man and the heavenly father he's about to hit that um that reverse switch and he's gonna you know put all the uh curses of Deuteronomy 28 on you heathen nations starting with you Edomites and um put the blessings on us right verse 1 to 14 he's gonna put uh, uh on us and verse 15 all the way to 68 he's gonna put on you on you other nations man especially you edomites right you're not getting off scot free no way let's go to the book of uh, zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 19 it reads behold at that time i will undo all that afflict thee and i will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out and i will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame right so we're gonna get praise and fame in every land where we've been put to shame man you see, you got your celebrities, your A-list, B-list, C-list celebrities here on the earth right now. Well, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be here on earth, we're going to have a new class of celebrities, man. And, and those celebrities are going to be the elect, right? The elect are going to be the, the new celebrities in the new world to come, right? Those who endured until the end, those who continued in the face of adversity, those who stood stiffly for the name of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, those that died for this truth, right? We're going to be the new celebrities 
in the kingdom of heaven, Lord willing, right? The hopeful elect. You see? And, and you know, this, this time here, these prophecies here, are um, they're not, you know, they're not far away, right? Look at everything that's happening right now. The kingdom of heaven is about to be established, man. There's no debate in that, you see? Look at all the prophecies going on right now. The, you know, this Bible is literally, it's, it's not even talking right now. It's screaming, man. This Bible is screaming right now. But our people still won't listen, you know. To the Heavenly Father, he's just going to destroy the, the wicked of our people, man. They, they just don't want to get it, man. They don't want to wake up, you see. But the Heavenly Father, he's going to defend his elect um, uh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. When these calamities, uh, um, you know, intensify, right? Because it's, we're heading into some very bad times, man. The reason why we're going through all the sufferings is because the Heavenly Father, He's building us up for the for the extremely, extremely hard times that we're about to enter into, man. The time of Jacob's trouble. So the Heavenly Father, He's building us up in the spirit, man. He's got us going through certain different situations, building up our faith, building up our trust in Him, and you know, the strengthening us, man. You see, Isaiah thirty-one and five: As birds flying, so will the Lord of Hosts defend Jerusalem, which is a people before it's a place. So this is talking about the Heavenly Father defending the elect, right? Defending also, He would deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it, right? He's going to preserve his remnant. You see that they shall not see death. They shall not taste death. Only with their eyes shall they behold the reward of the wicked. You know, when Lord willing, we be beamed up into that great gigantic chariot. And we congregate together and we look down and we watch the destruction of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, and the surrounding, uh, 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 and you know, the other lands of the earth being destroyed right but we know america is going to be completely destroyed right thus saith the scriptures so this is what we're waiting for man and we believe wholeheartedly that these that this is going to happen because you know every day the heavenly father he proves to us that he's a real and living power man and you know we know that none of these words in the scriptures shall come to fail, man. It's not gonna, none of these words in the scriptures will return unto the heavenly father void, man. We can read Isaiah chapter 55 for that. We'll get that real quick. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. You see? So everything that, every, all, all the scripture I just brought out now, these things are going to come to pass, man, whether you believe it or not. It doesn't matter if you don't believe, right? It's not, it doesn't change the will of the Heavenly Father, man. So really and truly, you've got two options. You either get right or you get left. Simple as, right? Let's go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 13. And 10, he that, let's start at verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall what? Shall go into captivity. Didn't all these other nations lead the children of Israel into captivity? So what does that mean? That means all these other nations have to go into captivity under the Israelites. That's, that's what you call uh, um, 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 a just balance, you know The Heavenly Father, he hates a false balance Right He that leadeth into captivity Shall go into captivity He that killeth with the sword Must be killed with the sword Here is the patience and the faith Of the saints So this is what we're waiting for Right And we know That these words are faithful and true man You can read Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of these prophecies, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Not exactly the scripture I wanted, but it still um, um, makes the point, right? Because these things are going to happen. 
right? There's no denying it. We're pretty much living in the time of 2nd Ezra 15 and 16, right? And it's only going to intensify. You see? Let's close out here. In 2nd Maccabees. Chapter 6 and verse 12. Now, I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, right? You know, we're, we're, right now we're catching all kind of hell, man. Whether it be at work, whether it be your family, your woman, your car might break down or whatever it might be, man. We're all catching hell in, in our own way, right? But you see, well, let, let's read on, man. That they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for a chastening of our nation. You see, the Most High, who he loves, he chastens often, man. It says in the book of Job chapter 5, despise not the chastening of the Almighty, right? Because that shows that the Heavenly Father, he's really dealing with you, man. Because it says that he's going to try you like gold in the fire, man. And, you know, that, that means that it's not going to be easy, man. You're going to be thrown various different trials and, you know, various different tests that the Heavenly Father is going to throw at you, man. And you, you're going to have to go through it. That's just how it is. Ultimately building up your faith and your trust if you're part of the hopeful elect, right? Verse 13. For it is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers when wicked doers are not suffered any long time but forthwith punished because you know we have to endure all the suffering and it seems like everyone else is just getting away with their wickedness right but you see there's a method to the madness right verse 14 for not as with other nations whom the lord patiently forbear if to punish you see it's not that the heavenly father don't want to punish these other nations especially you edomites right but he's bearing he, he he's being patient man and he's bearing with your iniquity because ultimately he's gonna allow you guys to to build up your sins to the point where the mighty judgment that the heavenly father is gonna bring is gonna be completely justified right completely justified and and also by that being done <clears throat> so lucky it um it establishes the fear of the lord on this earth man because right now the reason why this world is in such a fucked up predicament is because people don't fear the heavenly father and his only begotten son right so by by them bringing forth this great judgment is going to instill that fear back on the planet earth <clears throat> and and you know it's going to it's going to get everyone in order man right second maccabees 6 and 14 for not as with for not as with other nations whom the lord patiently forbeareth to punish till they come till they become to the fullness of their sins so dealeth he with us you see he's allowing their iniquity to reach unto the heavens man just so that he can bring forth that mighty judgment verse 15 lest that being come to the height of sin afterwards he should take vengeance of us so you know you wicked ass edomites you continue doing your thing man you continue to oppress our people because guess what your judgment is just going to be greater you know and we we can't wait for the heavenly father to send down Yahweh Shai to do his thing, man. We can't wait because we're, we're tired of being oppressed, man. We're tired of being at the bottom. We're tired of, 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 you know, trying to live righteously and suffering for doing so. You know, it's about time where, you know, we get our lick back, man. First of all, starting with Yahweh Shai, right? We can't forget what you, what you Romans did to Yahweh Shai on the cross, you know? So Yahweh Shai ultimately, he, he's he got to get the ultimate lick back, you know. But salvation is only reserved for the nation of Israel, man. Don't get it twisted, you see. 
Volcab Malone, he ain't making it into the chariots. You know, if um, if his if his if his uh, seed land doesn't go back to Jake, which you more than likely don't, he ain't making it into the chariot. Even if he was a Jake, he ain't making it into the chariots, man. Why? Because look, look, look how he's coming up against the doctrine, man. You know, he he's battling so hard to 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 come up against this doctrine. He ain't making it into the chariots, man. You see. Yahweh Shai, he sent the 12 to the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. This Bible that we read is written by Israelites for the Israelites. So how the hell are you heathen nations going to get salvation, man? Right? So hopefully this lesson was edifying. And until the next time, I say Shalom.